Friends, in this video, we will try to understand what is normal distribution or Gaussian distribution. These two are terms for the same thing. We'll also understand what is z-score and we'll do some Python coding to understand how exactly these concepts are used in the field of data science and machine learning. So let's get started. Let's say you want to do data analysis on people's height data set. You would be wondering what kind of analysis you can do. Say you are a data scientist working for a clothing store and to produce the clothes of certain size, the clothing company has assigned you this task. As a data scientist, you want to do some analysis on people's heights. Now, when you plot these heights on a histogram, it will look like this. What is histogram? Histogram is a frequency distribution. For example, you have three data samples between height 5 and 5.5. So what are those samples? Well, 5.1, 5.2, 5.4. So you are just plotting the heights and the counts of those samples on this simple chart, which is known as a histogram. And when you draw a curve that passes through this histogram, this curve looks like a bell. You know, you might have seen a bell in a church or a temple. And that's why this curve is known as a bell curve. So this is what normal distribution is. In normal distribution, you will have most of your data samples around average, average value. And then you will have some data samples which are far away from average on left and right hand side. For example, you will have some people whose heights are six or maybe around seven feet. You know, you'll have very like small percentage of people whose height will be around seven. Similarly, you will have small percentage of people whose height will be let's say less than four feet. So the idea is in nature, we find many data sets who, which follow the normal distribution. For example, let's say you are looking at the prices, two bedroom prices, of apartment in Bangalore city. Most of the apartments on average, they cost around 90 lakh rupees. So you see, let's say I took samples of few thousand property prices and you will see like for 90 lakh rupees, I have around 280 data samples. Similarly, you will have very few data samples whose, high, whose price will be on a higher, higher end. Okay, and very few data samples whose height will be on a lower end. So most of the values will be centered around average. And then you as you go far away from the average, the number of data samples reduces. You see the similar behavior when you are examining taste scores for a given classroom. Let's say you took mathematics test, you know, and the test is giving you score out of 100. Let's say your maximum score is 85. You will find very few people who will have high marks and very few people who will have very low marks. Most of the people will have marks in an average range. Another example is employee performance. When they will at employees performance, majority of the employees will have performance in the average category. You will have few best performer and few low performers. So we naturally see normal distribution in many data sets and therefore for data scientists and machine learning engineers knowing normal distribution is very very important now you'll ask me okay i understood normal distribution how can i use this in my real life how can i use this in data analysis the classical use case is during data cleaning process you can use normal distribution and standard deviation for outlier removal. Let's say I use the same data set, but I have added a new data point, Smith, whose height is nine feet. Now outlier is a data point which, which has a value that is very different from, from your average values. Here, you know, people's height are usually around six feet, five feet, but you don't see a person with height nine feet. Okay. So these kind of outliers can occur because of an error in data collection process or, you know, in data transmission process, or sometimes you might have uh, valid data points. Like you, you can have a person whose height, I think the person uh, whose height was maximum in the history, uh, he had height, uh, 
of 8.7 feet or something so you can have a valid data point as well but when you plot them on a histogram you can clearly see that those data points kind of stand out they are very far away from your normal regular data points during data science process you want to treat the outlier and by treating the outlier i mean you either want to remove them or you want to apply some other methods to treat them if you don't treat outliers it will create problems in your data science process in your machine learning process you know your machine learning model might get skewed because of the presence of these outliers so it's important that you treat the outliers either by removing them or applying some kind of transformation now here i have a very simple data set when i have a data set which has less than a million data points just by looking at the data points i won't know which are outliers so you need some kind of formula or you need to apply some math to figure out those outliers so what formula that is well you need to first understand what is standard deviation i made a very short video on that so please uh, go to youtube search for code basic standard deviation watch that 8 minute video once you have understanding of standard deviation now i will explain uh, how statisticians use standard deviation to remove outliers so here i have same histogram uh, the the bell curve again and in the middle you will have a mean point your average point on the right hand side you have see this sigma symbol is for standard deviation so you have plus 1 standard deviation plus 2 standard deviation plus 3 minus 1 standard deviation and so on by conducting so many test on normal normally distributed data set mathematician and statistician found that 68.3% data points in any normal distribution comes in plus and minus 1 standard distribution standard deviation similarly 95.5% data points out of all total data points fall under plus 2 minus 2 standard deviation range similarly 99.7% fall under plus minus 3 standard deviation range now you can use this knowledge to remove outliers general guideline is if the data point is beyond 3 standard deviation so any data point that is greater than plus 3 standard deviation or minus 3 standard deviation can be treated as an outlier this is general guideline okay there is no fixed rule sometimes when data points are small i have seen people using two standard deviation as well so it's a it's a matter of you know using sense of judgment as a data scientist to figure out the correct formula but what we'll do is we'll now do some python coding and we'll use uh, standard deviation to remove the outliers from our data set I went to this particular Kaggle dataset I have downloaded this CSV file the file has height and weight I have removed weight from that file so now in this file I have people's height you know I have 10000 such data points where I have different people's height and I have loaded uh, that into my Jupyter notebook I have my data frame ready and if I do df dot height so my height is a column and if i do describe it tells me i have total 10000 rows you know my standard deviation for this height column is 3.84 i have my min max and so on now we already saw that we can use plus and minus 3 standard deviation to figure out these outliers now before we do that i would like to use seaborn library to plot the bell curve and the histogram and the way you do that is you call hist plot function in that you supply your height column and you will say kde is equal to true which means it will plot this kind of curve as well if if kde is false it just plots the histogram you know so now you can clearly see this is a bell curve it's a normal distribution many times as a data scientist when you are doing data exploration you want to plot 
uh, this kind of histogram to figure out whether the distribution is normal or not and based on that you can make certain decision 80 percent of time spent by data scientist is in data cleaning process because when the data comes you know it, it is often messy it has errors and it has legitimate outliers so you want to remove those outliers before building your model and that's exactly what we are going to do here so to remove the outlier first you need to figure out a mean so let's say mean for my height is 66 and these heights are in inches so 66.36 inch is my mean and my standard deviation is 3.84 now we already saw in the diagram here where was my diagram that i can use plus and minus three standard deviation to remove the outliers so let's see if i do mean minus three standard deviation i will get this number and if i do mean plus three standard deviation I get this number so what I'm saying is any number between 54.82 to 77.91 is a valid number anything outside that is an outlier okay so in pandas data frame now I can do something like okay if my df height is less than this number then that's an outlier so I get two data points like that you know i will also say that okay it is either this condition or or 77.91 right so 77.91 so i get five such data points see with who has height of 78.09 and so on i can combine this into one condition i will say this or that you know like df diet height if it is less than this or greater than this then that's my outlier so i found total seven outlier out of ten thousand data points and to remove this outlier i can create a new data frame called df no outlier and i can just you know apply a reverse condition you have to just apply a reverse condition of this and what is the reverse condition well the reverse condition is this so what I'm saying is my regular, my clean data set is something for which the height is greater than 54.82 and less than 77.91. And when I do the shape, obviously, see, I find 993 because seven data points are outlier. So hooray, as a data scientist, you just did data cleaning you remove the outliers and now using this particular data frame when you build your machine learning model it's gonna be much better let's now talk about z-score well i will tell you you already know z-score if you know standard deviation you already know z-score it is the same concept with a little tweak okay what is that tweak here again i have my bell curve in the middle i have mean on the right hand side i have plus one standard deviation plus two standard deviation sigma is for is the symbol used for standard deviation if i have a data point here at two standard deviation then the z score for that data point is two if i have a data point which is in the middle of two and three standard deviation let's say 2.5 then the z score for that data point is 2.5 similarly if i have a data point here between minus one minus two then the z-score of that data point is minus 1.5 so z-score is nothing but how many standard deviation away your data point is from mean so you understand right like the z-score is for every single data point so you can compute z-score for every single data point and that's what we'll do for this particular data set see here for this height column i took an average which is 5.25 Again, I took standard deviation for this. I found it to be 0.61. Now, from every single data point, I can subtract average and then divide it by standard deviation. I get my z-score. So the formula for z-score is every single data point minus average divided by the standard deviation. Okay, so it's pretty 
simple concept if you know standard deviation you already know z score it's the same concept there is no rocket science here now let's apply z score in our notebook and do the outlier removal here again i have my data frame with all the data points and i want to calculate z score for every single data point and for that obviously i need to create a new column when you do this it will create a new column called z score and what is that column well that column is df dot height so you take your individual data point you subtract mean from it so you say df dot height dot mean you divide that by the standard deviation so this is how you get standard deviation and then when you look at your data frame i have already added new column called z score and these are my individual z score now i want to verify how i came up with 1.94 whatever number well it's pretty simple see my mean is this okay my standard deviation is this for that first data point and now what i'm going to do is i i will use the formula okay what is my formula let's look at my formula okay x which is a data point minus mean divided by standard deviation so my data point is this minus mean okay mean is this and what is my standard deviation standard deviation is this and when i do that i get 1.94 see 1.94 so it's fairly straightforward concept now once you have z score column it becomes even more easier to remove the outlier so i will first look at all those data points whose z score is greater than three see i found five such data points whose score is greater than three and less than three is two data points right so if you want to see let's say both of these in one shot then i can say okay less than minus three or greater than three and i get same my seven data points and you can use the same technique you know i can say zf df no outlier is equal to the reverse condition you know the inverse condition so i will do this i will replace or with n and this will be like okay my z score has to be greater than minus three and less than three and that's my no outlier and you find again 999 nine, 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 three. so i removed my seven outliers i got my cleaned up data frame on which i can perform my further data analysis and even i can build machine learning model on top of it now comes the most important part of this tutorial which is an exercise i have given a link of this exercise page in the video description below you can read the description and work on this exercise friends working on these exercises is very very important so i want you to develop the solution yourself and then you can click on this solution link to verify your answer with my answer i hope this video gave you some understanding of z-score and normal distribution outlier removal was just one use case there are many other use cases as well as we progress forward in this particular tutorial series and by the way this the link of this playlist is given in a video description below so you please check other videos as well we are learning mathematics and statistics for data science and machine learning in a very very simple language and by doing a lot of practice as well so make sure you check other videos as well and if you have a friend who thinks that math and statistics is hard well try to share these this playlist with them so that they can remove that bias these things are not that hard actually you just need to have some discipline learn the concepts in a clear simple way and then practice on python so, okay so i hope this was useful thank you very much for watching this